Jay here, Full Time Devils. This is the Derby County FA Cup fifth round preview. Joining me today are the usual suspects. We've got Adam McCola, Maka, how are we doing? Yes, guys, what's going on? Also making his second appearance on the channel is Kirthan. How are we doing, Kirthan? I'm doing great, Jay. How about you? Yeah, that's good, mate. And last but by no means least is Carl Edgar from That United Family. Carl, how are we doing? Yeah, good. You all right? Yeah, that's enough from you. Anyway, moving on, it is the FA Cup. This is a competition where United have not done too badly recently. We won it a few years ago. We're into the fifth round. We're not exactly flying, but we got past the difficult Wolves team. So who knows? Maybe we've got a chance. What my question is, Maka, to you, is this a competition that could offer Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a bit of salvation? We know the pressure's on him. If we were to go on a good cut run and maybe even win it, do you think this is a chance for him to keep his job next season? It didn't say Van Aal. It didn't say Van Aal. So I think the club look at the bigger picture of things. We could, like, obviously we're not going to be, but you could be 15th, win a cup. It's not going to save you. Um, but on the other hand, I think Ali is obviously hasn't had as much money to spend as Van Aal. He had a lot of players leave. Um, and I think they would possibly, if he wanted any trophy, take that as evidence of his a success I think with, with Solskjaer so I think I do think the goalposts have moved a little bit um, and I don't I don't think he would be treated like Van Aal plus I feel like they would, imagine if we were outside when like do you remember Wembley when Van Aal got sacked yeah it was a little bit oh, it was a little bit flat you felt gutted for him now I can only imagine if that was to happen to Ali how the fans would react if he won a trophy um, it could be civil war. Um, it could be it could be great for him to win a trophy and bow out at the end if the club had that decision made from January. But we know our club don't do that. Our club make knee knee jerk decisions. Um, so do I think a trophy would save him? Maybe in Ali's case, do I think a trophy should save him? No, because you can We could win the FA Cup and have a really bad end to the season. Um, and the FA Cup could just make it look better. So I think you have to judge on the football, the improvement, how how the players are getting on, the tactics and the bigger picture thing rather than trophies. I think the goalposts have been moved a little bit with Valley and I think a trophy could potentially save him. But like you could win the FA Cup and still have a disastrous end to the season. Um, so... I'm a bit in two minds. I think you have to make the decision based on the bigger picture of things. Are you happy with the improvement of the players? Are you happy with the transfers? Are you happy with the performances? Are you happy with the results? You have to bring all those things into the equation. And ultimately, that was why Van Aal lost his job. Um, so I think because of the way our club is run and the knee-jerk nature of it, I think, yes, it could save him. I always felt sorry, if, you know, for not for Van Aal as much, but I felt more sorry for Jesse. He scored that winner, didn't he, in the cup final, final. And no one really spoke about it because Van Aal got sat the next day and then Jose, Jose was in. I felt sorry for Van Aal because I thought, at the very least, like, regardless of the way people look at Van Aal as, like, this crazy little eccentric dude and, like, his football was a bit horrible at times, you know, remember December and all that. He did have very good times at United. In the big games, we were pretty strong. Um, and I think when you win a trophy, you have to, you should at least give him 24 hours. Do you know what I mean? It's not like we had a game the next week. We had we had no games. We had summer holidays, pre-season and everything. And I think it was maybe a retaliation from the, the, the journalists and the media towards Van Aal for what he had maybe said to some of them or whatever. But I think it was a little bit unfair to do that and disrespectful to a great manager. Um, whether he was a great manager at United or not, um, it was very disrespectful to him. So I don't think it was the right thing to do at that point. Um, he should have got given a, at least a day or two to fucking, you know, look at his trophy for a bit. I know it did uh, did lack a little bit of class. Kirtan, you know, as, as Adam mentioned there, as Maka mentioned, as, um, you know, winning the FA Cup doesn't mean you've had necessarily had a great season and it doesn't get you into Europe. Has Europe got to be the priority? Because obviously we're in the Europa League. If you win that, you get into the Champions League. If you get top four, you get into the Champions League. If you win the FA Cup, you don't get into the Champions League. Should that, that be at the forefront of uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's mind? Firstly, regarding sacking of LVG, I don't think it had anything to do with uh, winning the FA Cup or not winning it. I think he would have been sacked either ways. 
because uh, quite towards the end of his uh, reign uh, the style of football was quite horrendous it was more of side to side and then back pass then rewind and repeat and all of us were getting tired and sick of it especially even when we were nil nil or 1-1 or trailing away towards the lower league teams we were still doing the side to side and back passes so it wasn't going anywhere so i think it was on the cards that he's going to get sacked and uh, with what ole is doing right now uh, there is talk of this rebuild on the field that is going on but uh, i think what is more important important is the rebuild of the field the attitude of winning right so uh, the greatest strength of sir alex ferguson's teams have been the winning mentality the winning attitude and that is something that can't be bought or taught right it only comes with winning so i would take any trophy a trophy is better than no trophy so fa cup europa league anything will do but uh, since we are in the middle of a huge rebuild and a huge uh, uh, revamp of the of our side i don't think winning the fa cup or not winning it uh, will affect ole's job i think he will stay despite our league position or fa cup or no fa cup or europa league or no but yes among fa cup and europa league i think we should prioritize europa league if it comes to that good stuff carl what do you think this could do for the, the players especially some of the younger players a good cup run winning the fa cup do you think this is something that they'd be up for yeah most definitely like especially like williams and people like that it's they're born into it, do you know what I mean? They, they're used to winning or seeing United winning trophies. And I think to be involved in that and to win an FA Cup or win the Europa League, it's something that's going to spur them on it and just make them better players as a whole. Like Kerthan says, winning is, you can't buy the mentality of winning. You, you know, if, if you want to win, you'll win. So winning the trophy this season or a couple of trophies this season will do the whole squad. And Oli, it will kickstart us, I think, for next year if we do pick up a couple of trophies this year and I just think it'll give the fans a bit more of the confidence that obviously it's very split isn't it Ollie in Ollie out and all that stuff so I think if we win a couple of trophies and we finish outside the top four there's obviously there's a negative there finishing outside the top four but we've messed it up eight times so a couple of trophies I think would do the whole squad and the manager and the fans a massive a massive amount of um I can't give you words out a massive uh, it will give everyone a boost a there bit of go. a lift yeah, give everyone a bit of a lift for the start of next season. Obviously, if we if he's back properly, then there's no reason why we can't do bits next year. Now, it's not like we've got a massive squad, but we do seem to have a little bit more options than recently than we've had of late. We've got McTominay coming back, maybe even a certain French midfielder could be back before we know it. Defensively, we've got different options. Eric Bailly's been coming back into the squad. And I just feel as well with Bruno, when Bruno's in the team, you feel like maybe you can play a one matter or you can play a lesser player around him because he is so good. Maka, how do you look at this? Do you think Oli's got options now to mix it up a little bit? I know we're going to get to the predicted 11 later, but do you feel like we do have a bit more of a squad just because of the signing, maybe even of a Gallo as well? It just gives us a couple of extra options, especially with players coming back from injury. Yeah, it does. I mean, you can play a diamond now if you wanted to. I mean, we've got McTominay, Matic, Fred back. We've got Bruno. So we've got almost a full midfield. Um, Paul Pogba back at Carrington now, which is good. Um, so hopefully he'll be back soon. Like we're getting close to a fully fit team. Bar Marcus Rashford, I think Lee Grant's got an injury, hasn't he? Um, we're, we're getting very close to a fully fit team. Um, we still have those deficiencies in wider areas. Um, Tahiv Chong obviously hasn't been pulling up trees, and you know <clears throat> Daniel James has had a little bit of a dip. Although I think since the winter break, some of his performances have been better. Although some of them have still still showed them frustrating signs. Um, I just think it's it's unfair to get on his case so soon with Daniel James because he's a, he's a new lad, new to the Prem, new to the team. And I think we've we've probably played him too much too soon. Um, but I do think we have imbalance in the team. But like you say, getting all these players back gives us options. It allows us to be able to make one or two changes. And that's one of the things I've been pleased with with Ali. He's, he's been able to make changes in certain games. And so far, his squad management has been okay. Um, obviously, we've now got Thursday, uh, Derby, Sunday, City, and then the Europa League kicks back into to the swing of things again. Um, so he needs to balance that squad again even better. You get almost caught in that. We've got top four, which is right there now. We can almost smell it. And we've got the Europa League, which is going down to the last couple. With us being in the FA Cup last day, it's kind of almost like, do you try and keep spinning all three plates or do you just focus on one now in it that's that's the big sticking point because i seen some united fans yesterday on 
online and um, I didn't get involved. I was just reading through their opinions and it's like some people think we should just wait, for, just just go all out for top four, start resting players on Thursdays and Wednesdays. I don't think we have to do that, you know. I don't think we have to do Look at left back. You've got Shaw, Brandon Williams. Right back, Juan Basaka, Delo. I think you've got more than enough centre-halves to be able to juggle things there, especially with Bayi coming back. Um, in the midfield now, you can play Matic or McTominay. Um, you've, got a f- you've got a few more options, so I don't think we have to. I think we just have to balance the squad better. Yeah, absolutely. Keith, how do you see it? Do you think Oli will have one eye on the derby, or do you think he has to play his strongest team? How do you see him mixing it up a little bit? Uh, well, it's every manager's dream, isn't it? To have uh, two good players for each position and that squad depth. But for now, we are slowly getting there in terms of numbers. But squad depth in terms of quality, I don't think we are there yet. Uh, but getting our fringe players fit and the Fosu Mensas, the Baileys, all of them fit for to feature 90 minutes in a match, I think is a huge boost for the squad. Uh, so in round of 16s or maybe quarterfinals, we can field the so-called fringe players. But once it gets to the business end of the tournament, when we are serious about winning a trophy, I still think the Martials and the Fernandes will have to you know, be fielded and they'll have to step up. Step up. So uh, with our uh, fixture schedule, I think there will be some clashes and then we will have to make a decision whether we will go for top four or whether we will, if we will pursue the trophy. Uh, but until then, until we get to the end, I think we can uh, play two whole two different squads and uh, it's it's an advantage having that. Carl, how healthy do you think it is as well to have that competition for places? Maka mentioned then you've got Brandon Williams and Luke Shaw both fighting for that for that left back spot. You've got Eric Bailly who wants to get in the team, you've got options in midfield. Do you think that healthy competition can only move us forward? Yeah, of course it can. We 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 we're used to having healthy competition throughout the squad you know, over the years. And it's only really like the last couple of years where we've been limited had limited options in every position. But you look at Luke Shaw, it looked like he was dead and buried a couple of months back when Brandon Williams came to the team and absolutely lit it up. And over the last couple of weeks, even Everton against Everton, he was absolutely electric, sure. Even stuff where he used to get criticised for not getting forward enough or not doing the right stuff when he goes forward. He's now doing that. Do you know what I mean? And, and he was class on Sunday. Um, so, yeah, healthy competition is, is always good for any team. You look at City, Liverpool, they've all got different options. In the, Even Spurs have even got different options in every position and, and they're doing all right. So, you need that competition and you need decent players in each position. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're getting there slowly. Like like Maka said, we're very heavy in midfield, in the centre midfield and very light out wide. So, if we can address that sooner rather than later, then I definitely definitely going in the right direction. Good stuff. We're going to take a short break and then we'll be coming back with our everyone's predicted 11s. Right, guys, it's predicted 11 time. Kirthen, I'll start with you. What's your predicted yeah. 11 for the trip to Derby County? Yeah, so, uh, we'll have our cup goalkeeper, Romero, in goal. Uh, Van Bissaka has been very consistent and very clinical. He's been, uh, he's almost gone under the radar, hasn't he? Not much being spoken about him, but he's been really good. So, I think he'll get a well-deserved rest. So, Dalo right back. Uh, Maguire partnering by, hopefully, he's fit, fingers crossed. And uh, left back, I think, will play Williams. He's been really good as well. And I think a midfield of uh, Matic and McTominay. I think Fred will be rested with an eye for looking forward to City's game. Um, Marta on the right, James on the left. James missed the Everton game with a slight knock. I think he'll be fit for this one. Uh, I think we will have to play one of Lingard or Pereira, uh, unfortunately, to rest Bruno. So I think Lin- uh, Lingard will start and uh, Super Eagle Igalo up top. Super Igalo up top. So that's a 4 2 3 1. Maka, yeah. go on, what's your 11, mate? Yeah, I've been trying to think um, about how we'll go because obviously we've got the City game a, a few days later, but it's a massive opportunity and I, I sort of feel. Under the floodlights of Pride Park, the Wayne Rooney impact, it could do something for them. Um, so, I've, how do we approach this one? It's weird because the City game, it's a hard one, isn't it? You could play full team and still get dicked by them. Um, and I think in the cup, we've got to go through. So, I, I kind of want to see us go a little bit strong. Um, obviously, Romero in goal. I think it's great that it's a cup game now and not a league game because you can almost take the hair out of the firing line without making it look bad. Um, 
But the good, I say good thing, I was pissed off after the game and De Gea's mistake obviously cost us two points. But the good thing about that performance was it wasn't one of those typical ones that he has when he's having a bad day. You know, where everything's rubbish. He's kicking, he's, he's, he's saving, yeah. he's catching, everything goes wrong. It was literally just that mistake that he got wrong because he still made a few top saves. Very so good good saves. to see it wasn't an awful, awful showing from him despite that mistake. Um, Romero in goal, Wambasaka, Maguire Bay. I think we'll go with the back four again. Um, so Williams, Reshaw for the derby. Um, I'd bring McTominay out. Obviously, he's just come back from an injury, so let's, let's balance his time back in the team. And I, I don't think he was amazing against Everton in the second half. Um, and maybe that could be a little bit of fatigue catching up. But I'll go Matic, Fred. Um, it's difficult, in it, now? Uh, Daniel James. Juan Mata. No, Daniel James, Bruno, Juan Mata. Um, and Igalo. Igalo, another one for Igalo, man. I didn't think you'd be dropping uh, Anthony Martial. <laughs> not dropping. Guessing that... Not dropping. Resting, resting him, I should say. Resting. Have you got over his goal yet against Watford? Say that again? Have you got over his goal against Watford yet? Or are you still hey. watching it on repeat? Goal of the season. <laughs> goal of the season. <laughs> I love how much you love that goal. Um, Carl. Mate, have you, have you seen where I seen it from in the strip? <laughs> yeah. It made it 10 times better. Because Mate. I had the, the view from from like an angle where as soon as he rolled that ball under his foot, I just seen three defenders get sent to the shot. It was amazing. What I liked about it is that I thought he'd gone, I thought, what's he done here? He took it too far wide and then he did that. Yeah, it was mint. Uh, Carl, go on, mate. Who's your starting eleven? Um, when I spoke to Maka at Watford, by the way, in the fan cam, he's like bent over a little bit still, like trying to trying to hide something, talking about that goal. I won't <laughs> hide it, mate. The fan cams was just Maka showing telling it, everyone how good that goal was. I, I, have a, I have trouble hiding it when it's um, floppy, so... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right, uh, moving on. Uh, <laughs> Romero in goal. Yeah, let's move on, eh? Oh, Go my on. God. Romero in goal. Um, Dalo, right back. I think you'll see Bailly, Maguire... Williams as a four, Pereira, hate to say it, Pereira, Matic. <laughs> um, I don't think he's going to go, I don't think he's going to be overly strong because if he, if you play these guys on Thursday, you got to remember what City did to us before um, and, I, and I think he wants to avoid that. He played Bruno in the Europa League on a Thursday though, remember? Yeah, I know he, he tra- took, yeah, he, he took him, off. him off, yeah. But it's extra time in it as well, by the way. It's extra time and penalties, isn't it? It's not yeah. replays. I think Derby's a bit different to, to Bruges, though, isn't it? Like, do, you, <laughs> do you really need a Bruno Fernandes? No, yeah, I, think, yeah, I, think, I think Derby are better than Bruges. Yes. Um, I, I, think, I don't think Bruges are finishing... I know, I know Derby aren't doing great at the moment in the play... Uh, in the, I don't think Bruges would finish in the top four in the Championship. You're fucking having a laugh. We wouldn't even finish top four in the Championship. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> But Derby County, though. Derby, the, the championship's the best league in the world. I don't, I don't think you like realise this. It's hard to get out of. <laughs> I want to go down there. <laughs> no, no, look, we'd go I, down I, there and finish I, fifth. I, 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 <laughs> hey, don't look careful what you wish for. No, see, <laughs> the club Bruges wouldn't finish in top four in the championship. Are you just like having a laugh? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I'll be honest with you. I don't watch a lot hey, of championship. the championship. I don't. So I'm anything, not going to pretend that I do. In the championship. Any team from the top half of the championship and they win the Belgian division. There's, there's a got few Vincent teams. company over there playing with fucking plastic legs. <laughs> there's, there's, a few, there's a few teams in that championship, right, that play decent football. The rest of it is just get it wide get and whip the up the line. Don't think of the football. I'm not having it. 100%. They, they pump up some of these Bruges, man. I'm still all all I know about Darby. the championship Darby. is I don't want Leeds to get promoted. That's all I care about. Bro, I'm that, not bothered. Last year under Lampard, Derby were decent. This year under Koku, no, they weren't. They were shit under Lampard. They should have went up. Lampard shit. I hope everyone knows. <laughs> <holds him. laughs> Lampard is shit. Lampard is shit. But they Lampard were, Derby, shit. Derby were better than they were last year. Last better last year than the other. Right, we've gone off piece there. What's your team? Uh, right, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. To, to keep Macker happy, I'll go Fernandez as a ten. Right. <laughs> I reckon you'll see Chongy on the left. Dan James. Chongy, you yeah. mate. Chong- so he goes, under 23 is game, so I'm not oh, sure he did. Also, oh, he we had Axel Twanzebe fucking back. 
Anti-modifossum is that? What? Tim? I would make Tim, Tim captain tomorrow. On, um, Sorry, go on. I've, I've Tim Bowen trans at the back. <laughs> Shongi. Okay. Right, Shongi up front. Dan James. Um, uh, Agalo up front. You've given us 15 players. <laughs> no, I haven't. That's, a, that's, that's 11 with Chong in. So take Chong out and you will put... Um, you can't take your mate out. Greenwood. Right. Wide and Agalo up front. Interesting that everyone's gone for Igalo. A lot of confidence in Igalo from you lot. It's because he's a Nigerian um, R9. <laughs> yes. Oops. As Super someone claimed like not so long ago. Um, right, moving on to the opposition. As Why someone would you mentioned... surprised that we picked Igalo? Because I just thought that maybe one of you might have started Martial. That's all. Yeah, but if he's, if he's feeling his injury or he's injured, save him for the derby. I mean, See knowing what he Martial... the at, at the Etihad. Don't get me wrong. I know we need Anthony Martial for the derby, for the derby. The I'm just wondering season. whether one of his might have gone, even with just Mason up front. But I think only um, Cal picked him alongside about him. Mason. Drop Daniel James from my team and put Mason in. Right, I'm glad we cleared that up. Um, moving on, finally, to the opposition. Apparently, there's some guy called Rooney or something that plays for him. Macca, Former United you know about... boy, Tom Lawrence. Oh, interesting. Maka, go on, I'll start with you. What do you know about Derby County Football Club? You're the expert on the championship. Waza Roo is, um, is doing well at the moment, but people got to realise he's playing deep holding midfield. He never moves out of that midfield position. He's just using his brain. He doesn't even run to get involved in goal celebrations anymore. Um, I really, I, I've enjoyed watching him there because... It's like, you know, when that old fella comes to play with you and your mates and he ain't got the legs anymore, but he can just sit there and just do everything. He's like that with them. And he has inspired them to a little bit of improvement in the season, which is, is good to see as well, because uh, I always want to see Wayne Rooney doing well. Um, he's a United legend. He's, he's the country's greatest goal scorer. Um, and he's someone that I've got a lot of fondness for and a lot of time for. And he's given me some of the happiest memories of my life. But... He's not the player he was, um, and he's not going to be bursting into the box. Although, who knows, maybe the United game will bring it out of him. I think we have to look out for the likes of Martin Waghorn, Tom Lawrence. Um, those guys have been getting their, their goals for them. Wayne Rooney has been providing the platform for them to, to, to play on. Um, and I think, yeah, he's going to start. I, don't, I think it's also a big commercial deal as well, this Derby County thing. Um, with Wayne Rooney. So even if they've got a big game on the weekend, they're not going to rest Wayne Rooney for this game because they're almost looking at the bigger packages there to help them bring in fans, bring in money. And this Manchester United game is a showpiece um, event for them. Um, they've not won any of their last few games, though. Um, so, you know, they're probably in a little bit of a dip in form. Um, but I'm, uh, it's a weird one. I'm scared by this game. I'll be honest with you. Last time we went to Derby, um, Wan Mata and all that scored, we won 3 or 4-1, didn't we? Um, I don't think it'll be that easy this time around, although I'd like it to be. Um, Carl, Maka doesn't think it's going to be easy. Do you reckon it could be easy? Do you think that <coughs> if, if we play the team that you've predicted, we'll, we'll win this one? I think we'll win, yeah. I don't, I, like like Maka said, I don't think it'll be easy they've got some decent players on that side like you know like like i said curtis davis is another one jack marriott ben hamer tom huddleston they've all got premier league experience wayne rooney obviously another one um all got premier league experience so there's not gonna be no pushovers but i, I don't see us losing this game at all no kirthan how do you see this one going in terms of the opposition do you think it is just a case of you know keep your eye on wayne rooney and uh, the rest will take care of itself or do you think like the other lads have said that they have got some decent players and we can't just focus on Mr. Rune. Well, uh, they are 13th in the league and uh, they have been struggling to get in the wins. I think the first win in four or five games they got it last weekend. So they have yeah, Sheffield been... Wednesday beat Sheffield Wednesday, but Sheffield Wednesday are, are pretty poor, aren't they, I think? Yeah. Oh, so sorry. They have been... Sheffield this weekend, I, I, I know they drew their games before that. I apologise. I got that wrong. No worries. It's all right, mate. That happens. So they are going through a tricky patch, but it will be an emotional night for uh, Wayne Rooney. And uh, uh, the fans will be up for it. Their fans will be up for it. And their players will be up for it. Uh, so we have seen what happens when it is that, that is the case. We have seen some free goals scored against United. Some free kicks going into the top corners and whatnot. So I just hope there won't be anything like that. And uh, 
I just don't want to see it going to the penalties because I'm pretty sure it'll be a repeat of what happened before. Has Wayne Rooney ever scored against us, guys? I don't Either think. Before or after? He, I don't he, think he, he has. Like, I don't think he has. No, I don't think he, he has. hasn't since he left. I know that. Do you know what though? Makes me laugh. Is I guarantee you, hundred percent, he won't acknowledge the United fans. I'm telling you Will now. Will he celebrate though? He, won't, he might he celebrate. He doesn't. I remember when he was at Everton and United fans were singing his praises. Even when he went off, he didn't acknowledge him. But I think that's part of what because, makes him great. He's just focused on, a, on the job in hand. Because when, he's, because when he scored against Everton, he celebrated like crazy, didn't he? He kissed the United badge and celebrated. Yeah, there'd been a bit of a aggro on no, him in Everton fans. There. That yeah, was there was. They've been giving him a lot of grief, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't think he's beaten us and I don't think he's scored. I might be wrong. If I'm not, getting involved. Listen, listen, listen. Wayne Rooney doesn't try to, whether, we're, whether, whether he genuinely wants to celebrate or not, he wouldn't celebrate. Because what you've got to look at is these footballers are, are, are bigger now. The reason Wayne Rooney would have been trying so hard to get England's top goal scorer and United's top goal scorer and why Sir Bobby Charlton would have been so gutted to lose that is because that is lucrative to you in your post career. Um, you know, when you're doing appearances at clubs and your ambassador for this and you're getting wheeled out here left, right and centre. Um, Wayne Rooney will want to do all of that. So even if he wanted to proper give us some absolute shit, he wouldn't. I don't think he will though. He's a legend. We treat him like a legend. You know what I mean? We've had our moments with him, but... Yeah. I was going to say, some people, he's in, in many ways, it's weird because I still feel there's a little bit of underappreciation of Wayne Rooney. Because he's scouts. <laughs> <laughs> Bruv, it's true, man. He's and, 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 you can't deny, you know, he wanted to go to City. A little bit of footsie with City, exactly. I think that I think people still hold on to that, but you got to look past that. Come on, he won everything. He scored loads of goals. What more do you want? And you all know where to find Adam McCullough, usually outside the ground, going on about Andy Marshall's goal against Watford. It'll be outside Pride Park getting a fan cam reaction as well. This has been the full-time Devils Derby County FA Cup preview. I've been Jay. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.